Hello my friends, my name is Amy and this is my channel Muddy Boots Maker and this is a video about what I knitted in 2022. This morning I woke up and I very much felt like doing a video today and what better way than to kick off a new year than to close up the old year. I'm going to show you everything that I knitted. Most of the items I have right beside me here but if I don't I will put a photo up so you can see what I'm talking about. And everything I speak about today will be down in this description below and also on my Ravelry page. So I will put all the links down below and you will be able to access all of those. I will try my hardest to tell you all the yarns that I used and what I love about showing you the items after they've been worn for almost a year or six months is how you get to see how the yarns wore and how the garment looks after some time of wearing them. So I haven't done anything special to my garments. I haven't um, buzzed the um, pills off. I've just left them as is. Even one has a little bit of yarn holding a, um, a break in the yarn that I need to fit, um, mend. It's got a hole in it. So you will get to see that. I need to get to mending it but I haven't done that yet. I like how you get to see how things are worn and you can make decisions on patterns and yarn through seeing how it wears and tears. <laughs> Today I am drinking out of one of my absolute favourite mugs by Jacinta. Levershade Design is her business and I will put a link below. I am drinking a very beautiful smelling tea. When I opened this tin, oh my goodness, it is just, it's actually quite autumny in flavor and in scent, but you know, I can drink autumn drinks in summer, why not? It's also got some black tea in it and I know those of you who um, know my migraine headache issues I had last time I drank black tea. I'm just going to go steady. I'm just going to drink one cup and um, see how I go. Um, but one cup's generally okay. It's when I go over two, uh, over one, it, um, it can end up in a bit of a disaster. So this is the tea I'm drinking. I was also, I, mm, I held it upside down, but I will also put a link to the tea. I got gifted this tea by my brother and his partner. So beautiful. I love tea as a gift. But I'm going to pop my tea down and we're going to get started. Because the first thing that I knit in 2022, or that I completed in 2022, is what I am wearing here today. I'm going to stand up. Okay, I just had to move my chair out of the way. I am wearing my second Tegna. So this is my Tegna um, sweater top. It's in a linen cotton blend. And you start from the bottom up and do the lace and then you do the sleeves after. And I ran out of yarn, so I did shorter sleeves than I did in my first one. But I did a little pico edging, and I really, really love this edging. I would definitely pull back my other Tegna and do the pico edging if I was game <laughs> and had time to. But this is my beautiful Tegna. And the yarn I used for this one is the DMC Natra Linen. And I used Colorway 134. And it turned out well. It is a bit smaller than my other 
Tegna that I have knitted. I used five skeins for this one and I haven't written what size I did this in. Let me see. I absolutely love using Ravelry to keep track of all of my projects and I write as much notes as possible on my Ravelry page so please go over there to see any notes that I have written on these garments. In my grey Tegna that I knitted back in 2019 I did size 3 so I'm assuming that I did size 3 again with this one but I haven't written that down so um, that's a bit naughty of me. So in usual Amy fashion I did not swatch for this. I didn't even swatch for my first Tegna. I seem to have this record thing going where I don't swatch and things work out perfectly but I know it's going to creep up on me one day and when I use different yarns that I haven't used before I generally should do a swatch because this one ended up as I said a little bit tighter um, than I would have liked but then also I didn't have enough yarn to make this bigger so it is what it is. Um, the sleeves are the length that they are and it's actually quite nice on a day like today. It's morning right now but today is going to be 34 degrees celsius and that's quite warm. I could wear this all day but I probably couldn't wear it outside. It's a little bit prickly. Um, I think that's just the natural linen in it. Um, I do believe, yeah, so it's 58% linen flax and then it's got 26% viscose, rayon viscose and 16% cotton. So the Tegna that I knitted in 100% linen, I could definitely wear that all day long on a hot day. Excuse the noise, my kids have friends around and they're playing Monopoly Stock Exchange at the moment in the lounge room next to my studio. So if you hear laughter, it's just them having lots of fun. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so I, I would highly recommend doing 100% linen if you're wanting to wear it through the summer. This is beautiful and I definitely wear it over some um, shoestring dresses and stuff like that um, and then I can take it off and have something underneath um, but I probably will take this off once I finish the podcast because it's going to get warm. Next on my completed projects for 2022 is this little gnome now this gnome is the pattern Gnome Pun Intended um, by Sarah Shira. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'll put it on the screen and I'll put it down below. Um, I am apologise, I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Um, <laughs> Sarah did a year long gnome making um, cow knit along and um, I had all the intention of making one of these gnomes each month of 2022. I should never make plans like that because I just never get around to completing um, a, a challenge like that. With so many things that I do here on our property and so many things that I make and running a creative business, um, you know, at the start of the year, because we're in summer now and we're just outside heaps, I'm preserving, I'm harvesting, I'm planting and it's, you know, keeping the grass down, watering the animals, it's quite busy and then my business starts up and that gets busy as well, um, although last year was a little bit quieter than usual on the wholesale front, um, I got a lot of time to experiment with different offerings though like the pocket belt that I um, designed and started making um, yeah I just I just have a lot on the boil and when I come to my knitting I need to be making stuff that is practical um, things that we need I spent a lot of time making garments for my family um, so things like this just get put on the back end and one day I will make a friend or two for this little gnome. 
um, with this one. I believe I might have made a mistake and the body is a little bit longer and fatter than the pattern is so I'm not quite sure what happened there. I must have read the pattern a bit wrong. I absolutely love all of the layering of the hat and I recently in December added a little bell on the end of the hat which I absolutely love. I got this little bell in a advent swap that I did with one of my friends. Actually it came with um, Jacinta who made the mug. Um, I did a swap with her and she put in bells for one of the days and I couldn't have been happier because it was the perfect bell to pop on the little gnome. So I'm just going to pop him. I should mention the yarns for this little guy. Um, I used yarn in my stash. I know that this mustard is a, a yarn that I've had in my stash for a long time. Um, if I recall what it was, I don't have it in um, my notes, so I'm, I'm not sure I'll be able to track back and find out what that yarn is. But if I do, I shall put it down below and put it in my Ravelry notes as well. The brown is a yarn that I got in an advent last year so in an advent swap I got this brown and it was naturally dyed with black walnuts not by me but by the by my friend um, Kathleen who I did the swap with so they are the yarns and I have stuffed the gnome with alpaca fleece from our alpacas on the farm and the great thing about alpaca fleece is I have all the different color oh, well all the different colors I have light brown dark brown and white so I put dark brown in this and you can't see any of you know how you'd use maybe usual um, stuffing and you probably see the white come through you can't see that with this one I also put a few stones in the bottom of well pebbles really in the bottom of the gnome so he just really really steadily stands straight and he doesn't move so I found that really really handy okay I just had to go and talk to the kids because they were getting quite rowdy um all right my next knit okay my next one is this beautiful Felix cardigan oh, it's very floppy and I absolutely fell in love with the pattern when I made this. Um, there are a few things that I would change if I did this again. I would do a size smaller maybe. Oh, I, don't, I really like the size. So I did size 2. And I used the Karma Rose Llama Tweed. And as you can see, it sort of, it does pill a bit. It's pilling. And I've depilled it once. And it's definitely pilling less the second time around. So um, the wonderful thing about this cardigan is I can wear a dress in winter and pop this over and it is enough to keep me warm. It is so incredibly warm. I highly recommend if you live in a cold area to make yourself something with the Karma Rose Llama Tweed. I know that Zigo Zago in, a, in um, Castle Maine in Australia, she sells um, this yarn and that's who I got it from. And I believe it might still be on special, but what I would recommend with this yarn um, is that you don't use heavy buttons. I've, I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, yeah. those sneezes that come up. <laughs> Obviously getting a bit of dust from my um, cardigan here. Um, yeah, so the, the buttons sort of pull it down in the front. I would use a lighter button. I use these toggles here, I absolutely love. The look of the toggles um yeah uh, so after making this one i made oh 
do I do I talk about the other one I'll go out of sync of order of what I've made things with because it'll help me tell the story about this one so I made size two and I would have made size one just because of the um, the low underarm I'm not a fan of sweaters going quite low and then when you pull your hand up you're hiking the whole entire thing up I'm a fan of things fitting well particularly underneath the arm I want it to come up and <laughs> then go down my arm so I absolutely loved knitting this and I would probably knit another one um, what I do is I just do some adjustments which I did in the Felix pullover is it called Felix pullover yes so I knit the Felix pullover open up and oh this one just is everything it's just perfect um, I just absolutely love it it's I did size one but what I did was I did some extra rows to make sure that I got um, the length in the yoke that I needed to get sort of halfway between size one and size two of the depth and this one fits absolutely perfectly I am having trouble with my internet oh here we go so I made size one but adjusted pattern to have size two sleeves as well okay so I've knitted size one for the body and the yoke um, but I added a few rows to get to size two if that makes sense um, it might not make sense though <laughs> sorry oh it is hot having these on my body um, I will be putting pictures up of everything because I can't fully show you and I can't really I don't really want to put them on to show you it's just too hot so I have used a 100% pure alpaca yarn by my friend Rita who lives down the road from us and has 40 alpacas on her little farm and they take care of their alpacas so beautifully it is such a beautiful sustainable and loving farm and this yarn is just scrumptious again the same with the karma rose I can put this on and it is just enough to get through the coldest of winter days although I have cropped this one a whole lot more than my cardigan oh that blew out <laughs> sorry um, so I've cropped this one a whole lot more than my cardigan and there is a little bit of pilling happening it's gonna blow out again um, I haven't depilled this one yet so I'm hoping um, it actually needs to have a hand wash I haven't washed it um, yet and I need to I didn't even block this one um, it was just perfect I just wore it straight away and I wore it a lot during this winter um, and now yeah I really would like to wash it during summer and get it dry depill it and pop it away for winter the same with this one I'm gonna pop them both aside so I can depill and wash them and pop them away so that probably didn't make a huge amount of sense about the doing size one but I guess having this yoke part or particularly around the neck I needed size one and then as I got down here I made sure I added on the more stitches under the arm to get size two in the sleeves because I have you know I have um, sizable arms and, and I wanted it to fit not snugly just nicely so I can wear lots of other garments underneath um, I hope that makes sense please ask me any questions um, down below and I will answer them as much as I can all right the next sweater is a sweater I made for Charlotte and I have made um, a cardigan in the past for Charlotte where um, actually Hazel's wearing it now but um, where I use all my scraps all my 
um, small skeins and um, all the scraps of big um, skeins that I had and I use it all up and make this beautiful mild um, sweater and Charlotte went straight from blues to purples um, this year and she absolutely loves this sweater as do I. Now I have knitted this pop crop sweater pattern by Amber O'Brien um, quite a few times now. I've made a couple of sweaters for Charlotte from this pattern. So what I've done is I've just extended the sleeves and the body to make a full sweater rather than a cropped sweater. I will pop a picture up of Charlotte wearing this and this one I haven't put what size I did but I'm pretty sure I did size one or two um, and I've just as I said just used all scraps so I've held at least two yarns at a time and what I've held is a DK with a fingering weight to get the weight of the um, yarn. Amber's pattern asks for worsted weight so um, it's a little bit thicker than if I was to use a worsted weight. It's like more going into Aran weight I guess like 12 ply um, rather than 10 ply because I've used an 8 ply and a 4 ply yarn in this but it's worked out perfectly the only thing that's funny with this pattern is the back of the neck sort of curls over. It only does that when it's sitting off the body. It never does it when it's on the body. So it's not a big deal. And I think it could just be blocked out, but um, I don't bother with blocking Charlotte, this one for Charlotte. It sort of sits so nicely because it's so stiff. The fabric is just so perfect um perfectly tough and <laughs> it's very warm and charlotte loves it okay, the next item that i finished was my birkin sweater so i knitted this out of bendigo woolen mills yarn i used I used baby and luxury yarns for the color work and then I used the rustic yarn for the gray um, for the main color which is the gray um, and this is my little hole that I need to repair so it looked like it was just a break in the yarn and I've just threaded through some yarn there, but now I'm looking and under the arm, definite, there's a definite amount of sort of felting happening under the arm. And I reckon that's a, that's a, yeah, that's a break there in that. Um, look, I definitely think I wouldn't knit with the rustic yarn um, again in the four ply. I just found it, um, it sort of went very thin in parts and so I reckon that's where the breakages have happened. Um, it just, it was a little bit uneven in, in areas and the yarn was quite sort of, um, I, not brittle, what do I want to say, delicate, quite delicate in areas um, and I just felt like it could break easily and now with the wear and tear of this sweater and a little bit of pilling as well happening um, a bit of felting under the arms um, but that's okay I wear all my sweaters out on the farm so they sort of need to be tough and survive out out there and Bendigo Woolen Mills definitely have a yarn that is really tough and that is the classic yarn. I have had 
one of my jumpers going on for years and years. I think this was its sixth winter and it's now just starting to show a bit of thinning under the arms and I'm going to do some duplicate stitching under there but it has never gotten any holes and for this to have gotten a hole already in its first year I think I'm going to have lots of mending happening on this but that's fine I love visible mending so I'm just going to have lots of little sections where I'm going to pop a little visible mend in the same colors of the color work and that'll just add to the character of this sweater. I made the third size in this and it fits perfectly. I have no issues with the yoke being too long. I have started a second Birkin sweater and I have issues with the yoke being too long. Um, so yeah, there you go. I think it really depends on what yarn you use and swatching is important so you should do it don't do what amy does and not swatch okay go and swatch <laughs> um but i have i think i've almost um rectified the long yoke in my second birkin and i'm hoping that i will finish it soon and i will talk about it in my next podcast episode um so that is the birkin i I didn't do that whole thing where you put all the colors together and you take a photo and you do it, change it to black and white to see the variation in um, contrast. So I was kind of a little bit disappointed that this didn't contrast a lot more. Um, but someone said it looked like a beautiful watercolor painting. And after that, I just fell in love with it all over again. And I'm happy, happy with it. And I enjoy wearing it. Um, yeah, I just the rustic yarn. I have another rustic yarn story to tell you in another sweater. So <laughs> I will continue talking about that soon. And I think I'm gonna sneeze again. All right, the next one. This is another reason why you need a swatch. <laughs> okay. So this year, Charlotte became really irritated, particularly on her forehead with her acne and stuff and on her skin she came really irritated with wool and so I decided to knit a cotton beanie for her and I will need to knit her another one for um this year I knitted this one for her and you can see it is huge <laughs> it has stretched out and that is what happens with cotton she likes it. She um, thinks it's a little bit too big, but she has lots of hair. So she stuffs her bun underneath it and it works quite well. But you can see that it's massive. It has a lot of slouch in it, but it's big. Um, I did not swatch. I think 2023 is going to be the year of swatching for me. I need a swatch. I need to start swatching. Um, so... This pattern is by the Petite Knitter. It's the Mid Natsol hat. I used Fiddlesticks Wren yarn for this one. So it is a 100% um, cotton and yeah, I should have swatched to, I mean the, the fabric is perfect. I I would have had to have like altered the pattern and done less, you know, one less of the um, repeats, cast on less stitches at the beginning, but that's okay. It got her through this winter. She popped a little faux fur um, pom pom on the top, and she was happy. So I will definitely be knitting her another hat, and I will swatch it because. The cotton just it's different I have already knitted this pattern before and lo and behold it turned out smaller <laughs> um, but that was with uh, with wool yarn so okay so we're back to the rustic yarn <laughs> I knit this gorgeous pattern by Jennifer Steingass um, it is the garden gate sweater and I am really really wanting to knit it again in a different yarn for myself this was intended for me 
And to be honest, the yolk part was going to be massive. So again, swatching. I haven't written down what size I did. I reckon I did size four, three or four, and it was going to be so gapy. It is already quite like there's a lot of fabric around the um, yolk for Charlotte. You can see it puckering, but it felted. I gently soaked it like I did with my other sweater and this one felted and I think I don't understand like the other one doesn't felt the only part it's felting is under the arm so it, maybe it has something to do with the dye this one's been dyed and this one is natural this one has felted and the gray one hasn't like you can see the stitches in this one it has not felted and then you look at this one and it's turning into this fabric where you can hardly see the stitches it is felting so much yeah so that's interesting I I loved this color I really 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 wanted this to be mine I did pick up more of this color but I picked it up in DK weight so this is for like this is fingering weight um charlotte loves it <laughs> she's happy that i made a mistake um yeah i'm really unsure as to what to knit with the dk and whether i want to if it's going to felt like this do i just make something really big and then it felts and <laughs> i might do some swatching <laughs> i might do some swatching and see um, what can I tell you about this? I absolutely loved knitting this. I love Jennifer's patterns and I can't wait to knit this for myself. I finally did one of her patterns where I did the color work on the cuffs. Um, the other ones or the other one that I've knitted for myself. I haven't done the color work on the cuffs before. I have quite a few of her patterns and I really just want to knit all of them for myself this year. Like, come on, let's just get knitting, Amy. Let's just knit all the things that you want this year, hey? Knit for yourself. <laughs> I say that and I've just cast it on a sweater for my son, but that'll get done fast, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm pretty good with sweaters. I, kn I knit sweaters pretty fast. It's the small things that I don't. That's a funny thing, isn't it? It's, it's the wearable things that I like to knit. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. Oh, 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 if I was to choose a favorite knit this year, oh my gosh, it would be this beanie. This is the Antler Took. Toke, 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 right? Toke, toke, toke. <laughs> I know one of you corrected me when I showed this hat in my podcast. Um, so please do correct me again down below. Um, this is by Tin Can Knits and I love it. I will pop a picture of me wearing it. I have made it out of Rita's beautiful alpaca yarn again um Campo verde alpacas are their business name i will pop a link below their website is beautiful and you should follow them on instagram the alpaca videos and the alpaca love over there is just oh it's just beautiful so go and follow them over there if you love alpacas and love watching alpacas get really close to humans <laughs> like so close that they kiss um yeah i absolutely love this beanie i would knit another one i think i'm going to knit one in the leftover of the brown that i have um from my sweater i made the sweater that's up there i don't really have much to say about this one other than i love it and you should go and knit it yourself because it is beautiful it keeps my head so warm um, it's just perfect in every way. I have been doing some minor sort of damage control on this. Not that there's any damage, but I found a moth sitting on it. Oh my God. I don't know about this moth stuff. Like 
my mother-in-law has a moth problem and she brought a few garments into her house and I have a feeling that things progressed from those. Um, so I'm like freezing everything, putting it out in the sun, um, washing and just trying to keep everything away from my knits and everywhere else. But um, I believe I need to do my husband's like just op shop sweaters. Anything that you get from an op shop or you get from someone else that's wool, you should just thoroughly clean it, pop it in the freezer for 24 hours, pop it in the sun for 24 hours because I guarantee you, you know, there might be a moth in there or an egg or something. Um, I'm just going to be really, really careful from now on because I came into this house and there was nothing and now there's you know, I see moths flying around in our bedroom and I'm really, really careful not to bring anything into my studio. I don't want them in here. So that was pretty annoying to see that, but I'm on top of it. If you have any hints for moth control, <laughs> please tell me below. Thank you in advance. All right, my next one was the Felix pullover, but I've talked about that. So I, we will go on to... I haven't looked over this one. I just pulled this one out of Samuel's drawer. It's in pretty good nick. He chose the bright blue color. It's not a color that I would choose, but it's gorgeous. This is the Guston sweater. And I have not written what size I made. I'm pretty sure I made the small or the next size up. So the smallest or the next size. Samuel loves this. It is on the large size, but he's growing so fast. I wanted to make it last longer. So this winter coming, I reckon it's gonna fit him perfectly. I made it longer in the sleeves. Like that's really long, isn't it? <laughs> and long in the body. He wanted it to like cover his butt a little bit. so. I made it quite long. I remember mentioning in the podcast when I finished this one that when you're when you're looking at the chart for this part here, it's really confusing because it has you read it when you read it this way, it's fine, but then when you come back, it has it it has the chart telling you what to do as if you were looking at it from the front. So you have to do the opposite. It's weird. It's yeah, I'm not I'm not sure <laughs> what's going on there, but um I highly recommend just doing it from the written instructions rather than looking at the chart because I tried this three times and then third time lucky I just went, oh, I'm just gonna do it from the written ones and it worked out perfectly. So I was reading it from the chart and I'm like, no, that's not supposed to be a pearl. You're not supposed to knit there. It's supposed to, you know, be the opposite. And oh, it was, it was quite frustrating, but I got there in the end and um, yeah, reading the written rather than following the chart um, is what I would recommend. Other than that, everything went smoothly and I have knit this out of Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury 10 ply. The colour is Bermuda. And the blue colour is coming out just as it is on the screen. So that is all I knit garment wise. Then I went straight into Christmas knitting mode and I made these mushrooms that I'll pop a picture of up here. They are just so sweet. I highly recommend the pattern. It is a free pattern. It is Earl Grey Mushroom by Tat Tatiana um, Grigor Grigorian. Maybe, sorry, sorry, Tatiana. Um, it is just so sweet. I made one each for my kids and I need to make more for presents and gifts this year. It was a super quick, beautiful pattern to follow and I really, really love the end result. Next was Sadie. 
um, this little mouse I made for Hazel for Christmas. I used some Le Petit Lamb's Wool yarn to make this one and the overalls were from the stash so not sure. I just used lots and lots of stash yarn to make the clothing for all of these toys. Next was the Mary Molly. Um, all these patterns are by Cynthia Valet. Um, I will put the handle of their um, Instagram up here, but I highly recommend all of these patterns. They are just so well written. They are amazing and it's all in one piece. It's just so magnificently written. I highly recommend any of the patterns. I have knit four of the patterns now and I, I just can't say anything bad about them at all. Um, the Merry Molly is made out of Bendigo Classic 5 ply um, uh, in the brown colour. I don't know what um, the name of that colour is, but it is a brown. <laughs> and then I did Jody the Turtle and I used again the 5 ply classic yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills. I used Broadleaf in the It's a Green colour in there. Um, classic and it's the same color as the dress that I'm knitting for myself at the moment that I haven't touched for ages because it's summer and having a dress on my body while I'm knitting not gonna happen <laughs> but I'm hoping that I will have that dress done for this winter I want to wear it to the Bendigo sheep and wool show I can't wait for that um, I also used some Noble Fox yarn to make the clothing of this gorgeous turtle. And that one was for Samuel. The Mary Molly um, mole was for Charlotte. So they all got their pretty much Samuel and Charlotte agreed that I'm not knitting them any more toys from now on. So that was the last of it. Hazel, on the other hand, she is 10 going on five because she doesn't want to grow up. <laughs> she wants to be Peter Pan forever. Um, she wants toys, um, but I think I'm just going to stick with maybe making some clothes for the toys that I've made in the past because she has quite a few of these beautiful knitted toys that I've made for her. And that brings me to something I have not shown you that I finished in the last part of the year. Oh my gosh, this tea is delicious cold as well. Yum. I'm going to be making myself a cup of that. Just one a day. I won't have too much black tea. Promise. I promised myself. I'm just going to pop these on sock blockers if they go on. So you would have seen these socks that I have been working on. These have been long 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 time knits um, and I highly recommend not leaving socks for this long because you kind of forget what you're doing but luckily I was knitting two at a time and I was following I was following two socks at a time toe up magic loop by Stacy Perry who is pretty pink knits or something like that. I will pop it on the screen and down below. And I got the toe completely wrong on this. So the toes are quite short. Um, not hugely uncomfortable to wear, so I will bear wearing it. Just noting here that when I went to the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show, I picked up these sock um, blockers. And then I realized when I got home, or well, months later, that I got the small size and not the size for my feet, even though it's had the size for my feet on it. Um, so this year when I go back, I'm gonna get a bigger size. Okay, here they are. I have knitted two at a time socks before where I've knitted two in different yarns. So I haven't had to split the skein of yarn and then I've knitted them again so then I at the end I have two pairs of socks. Um, with these I am not going to do that because 
I mucked up here and I don't really want to replicate that. So these are just odd socks that I have finished and I still have to tie in the ends and the ends at the toes but um, I'm really happy with the colours, particularly in this one. I'm planning to make a pair in each of these. Definitely in the purple, I absolutely love that. But I won't make the mistake that I've made here with the toe, I will get it right. Um, they're quite narrow and because they were narrow, I had to knit this part longer than I would normally so that when they expand there's more fabric there, more length in the fabric. Um, I might use this in another scrap jumper or something. I really like this yarn. Um, I could make socks again in it, but I highly, really, really love the stripe in this. I got these yarns from a person who dyes on and off. Um, she doesn't dye much yarn, but she's a Melbourne-based um, art fibre artist um, and she's a photographer too. She's sort of headed more into the photography than into dyeing the yarn but she has probably still has some yarn on her um, shop so I will link it below um, if I can find <laughs> if I can find it. I purchased these many many years ago um, yeah but I'm happy with the results. Um, they're not the most perfect socks with these being you know short um, in the toe but I will wear them and that's that <laughs> they're done and I haven't put that they're finished on my um, Ravelry page but I will go ahead and do that and yay completed done that is all I knitted for 2022 so I'll pop these aside so I can weave in those ends and then they're completely finished. I hope you enjoyed going through all of those knits that I knitted for 2022 and here's to 2023. I'm hoping to finish some knits that I have on the go and I am hoping to cast on a whole heap of new wonderful projects. Some things that I have just been begging myself to start and I'm going to do another video to talk about the items that I would like to knit this year. Thank you all so much for watching my video. Go check out my other videos. Make sure you press like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe. I also wanted to say a huge thank you to those who have gone over to Patreon and supported me over there. There is already a video over there for you to watch. So if you are new here, I have just started a Patreon account where I am going to post most of my vlogs. So if you've enjoyed my vlogs or if you're new here and you haven't seen any of my vlogs, go back. I have a few months now where I have vlogged every single day of the month. So I had May last year. I did Me Made May and I went through every outfit that I wore and all the me made items that I wore in sewing and knitting it knitted items um, and I did vlogtober and I did vlogmas as well so this year I have plans to do me made may again but I am just going to post those for my patreon um, supporters over on patreon and one of my viewers suggested that I do Giftmas in July so I'm going to start knitting my gifts early this year and I'm going to get them done before we even enter Christmas territory. I'm just going to get them done. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a little bit here and most of it over on Patreon. So if you want to see my vlogs you need to go over and support me over there. The base line is five dollars Australian dollars a month and then you'll see all the videos with that um, and then there are other um, tiers which give you other benefits as well. So I will be posting a little bit here on Giftmas don't you worry I will be posting all of my knitting podcasts here for all of you to view and I will be 
trying to do a video once a week here on YouTube. And over on Patreon, I will be doing month long vlogs for some months and also one or two videos a week over there, as well as what's happening here on YouTube. Um, I have plans also to do um, Vlogtober and Vlogmas. Vlogmas will definitely be mostly for my patrons, um, but Vlogtober I will do again a bit of a bit of both. So the main reason I decided to do Patreon was to value myself more, value my time more, because it takes a lot of time to do the vlogs and you don't really get paid as much, to particularly for me being a newbie on YouTube and not having as many followers as other people do. Um, so I wanted to value my time. I'm very, very, I find it very, very important that as an artist and a maker, I get paid well for my business. Um, so I should get paid well for my time making the videos as well. But there is absolutely no pressure for you to go over and join me over there. I love that you are here. And please know that I will be posting here. I love the community, community on YouTube. I feel like I can even go deeper into community over on Patreon. But I will be showing up here and I love it that you support me here on YouTube. So thank you so very much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye.